Hello once again. This is Mike from Windows7Forums.com. In this video, I'm going to discuss with you the tools that I use to identify system properties and information. These tools can be valuable for a number of reasons. If you need to share information uh, with an audience or group of people, specifically someplace like Windows7Forums.com, uh, about your hardware or your software, uh, you want to actually know what you're getting into and how to do it. So the first way that you can identify some of your stuff uh, just from your computer itself is the very basic way of going to start <coughs> all programs accessories and you will want to go to system tools and system information. Of course you can just type in system information in the search prompt when you get to system information, you get a bunch of information about your computer, uh, mostly the operating system at first, you know, hardware abstraction layer, uh, version number, uh, what kind of manufacturer uh, this computer is based upon, the system model, whether it's a 64-bit based computer or not, and you get all sorts of info, uh, and this is very useful. Uh, you also get a list of hardware resources, but this information is dependent on drivers and if you don't have drivers you're not going to be able uh, to get much from this. This is just a basic sort of uh, what's on my computer and what does Windows recognize and you can export this uh, as a text file by going to file export or you can save it as an NFO file and it can be opened by anyone else uh, using uh, system information uh, there and you can also print. So that's a basic way of finding out more about your computer. <coughs> uh, another method that I use uh, and I've been using for a very long time is this program here. It's called Ada64 Extreme Edition up until I don't know how long ago it was actually called Lavalis Everest uh, and this is a program I have used in the workplace uh, to identify hardware and software uh, license keys and all sorts of stuff now when you launch this you can do many things you can benchmark the computer with a stress test a stability test you can check disk activity you can check your cache and memory. You can do all sorts of benchmarking, which tests the performance of your computer. Uh, this this program isn't really known for that, but it certainly does work, um, and it certainly will give you a good indicator of how fast your computer is performing uh, in comparison to others. Um, you can get detailed information about your CPU, your motherboard, your memory. Uh, utilization, paging, everything. Uh, your, you can get the readouts from your memory. Uh, you can get your chipset information. Uh, pretty much everything about your computer is going to be found here. If you go to sensor, you're going to find out your temperatures, uh, which are very important, very interesting. Looks like I might be uh, <laughs> preparing to melt down over here. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I'll have to check that out, make sure my uh, my system is all right but uh, yeah that's pretty strange but if you check um, you have like so much information here and all of it can be just sent out and report now this is commercial software uh, there is a trial version but it's not as fully functional um, but you definitely get your money's worth as far as information is concerned uh, this uh, the engineer edition of this software can be used uh, and the business edition can be used uh, uh, across networks to monitor uh, all sorts of information and, and collect information on computer systems. Um, you can find out your product key, and that's something you don't want people to see. You can see your uptime. Um, you can see all sorts of stuff. Um, so this this is going to give you license keys for installed programs as well, uh, and this is something you need to watch out for. Um, so this is a great utility. Now I don't just use this uh, to identify uh, problems, but that's one of the best. Uh, you can use a program called CPU-Z. 
CPU-Z identifies your processors, uh, specifically the core speed. Uh, as you can see, I'm running at around 3 gigahertz here, 3.5 gigahertz actually, and I have my multiplier, bus speed, QPI link. Uh, this is all important stuff to identify my processor, the brain of the computer, uh, the number of cores I have and the threads on my processor. Uh, the cache, the motherboard or the main board, uh, my memory, uh, the SPD readout on my memory, and the clock speed, the latency, everything. And of course, some basic information about my graphics. So this is good uh, to share with others if you need quick information about your processor, core voltage, so on, so forth. So when I use this stuff, I can go online and if I need to provide information to someone or draw up a report about a computer or if I need to make an assessment about a computer, I use these utilities uh, to find out more information. Now, one other great tool is called reliability and I'm going to show you that right now. You can use this reliability history. Okay, you type in start, search, view reliability and you get a history of your system's reliability. Now by default your system's reliability index starts at 10 and anytime there's a problem that reliability goes down a little bit. Uh, if we look here there was a problem and we don't have a, we have a full history but it's it's long and tumultuous. Um, we can look at one problem and see like as you see here there's good reliability but then it drops. Well, let's find out why this red X. Yeah, Internet Explorer crashed and Firefox crashed. Apparently uh, maybe a page I was on uh, neither browser liked uh, these but this is a four hour differential could be a memory problem. Uh, if we look here we see all sorts of stuff just stopped working and so uh, this is a lot of software that just stopped working. Uh, maybe I forced a shutdown or something, a computer crashed. And so the reliability index went all the way down almost to nothing. So the computer at that point was not reliable at all. But as time goes by and as no events take place, the reliability of the computer increases. So this, this software is very useful uh, for taking what normally would be event logs that are sort of disheveled and difficult to find and organizing them into a uh, into a situation that's easy to disseminate and that's something that you want to take a look at with the reliability monitor because the reliability monitor when you're trying to identify problems with your computer um, this can be very useful uh, to report problems with your computer to others um, and it's seldom used for whatever reason. I've noticed that uh, over time uh, people forget that this thing exists and so um, there could be a pattern of uh, malfunction going on as it appears on my computer. There's uh, uh, many things crashing but this is uh, if your computer if you use it a lot for productivity occasionally you're going to have these problems. As you could see my CPU is like overheating and that may have something uh, to do with it. Uh, this may have just be a simple matter of adjusting the heatsink and fan or some of the devices inside the case. But this all depends on how I analyze this data and uh, how I uh, take a look at other things like the event logs uh, which we could get into uh, and I may get into that uh, a little bit. But I want to go to the resource uh, manager. A resource manager is located in Start, Accessories, uh, System Tools, uh, Resource Manager. But if you just type in Resource, Start, Search, Resource, you get to, we don't want to see Letter to Human Resources, we want to see Resource Monitor. And Resource Monitor tells you how much CPU is being used up, by what, how many threads are running, and what the average is. As you can see, my CPU is running a little bit hot here. I have a program called Fraps and that's what's letting me make this recording and it's using up uh, a significant amount of CPU, not enough to slow my computer down. Uh, I also am running a 25 megabyte per second disk I.O. which is actually very high. Um, sometimes like on a virtual machine or a machine that was just installed you'll see a disk I.O. 
of less than a couple kilobytes per second but I'm writing so much because fraps right here uh, is what's writing it's it's writing the video that I'm going to present to you later on uh, that you're actually watching right now uh, and when we look at network utilization we see uh, normally what we would see under disk activity and that's that's nothing uh, not much is going on here but we can use these charts on the right hand side these little graphs to sort of understand uh, what's going on and when you start seeing 100 megabytes per second on your disk that means you need to find out and isolate what program is using up all of that, those resources and in my case it's self-explanatory I'm creating a high definition video and this is using up a lot of uh, read and write space uh, a lot of uh, disk input output which is called disk IO so uh, this is all explainable in my case but in many cases you may run this software and find things that you'd never believe uh, here we can see how much memory is being used I have 20 gig or <laughs> yeah I have 20 gigabytes of RAM on my computer uh, but I, a lot of it is just in standby uh, you know about 3 gig gigs are in use and as you can see Skype which is a phone uh, application you know is, is using a lot but mostly the video uh, software is what is using up uh, a lot of memory uh, Steam which is a program that lets you run uh, online games and the Catalyst Control Center which controls my video card is uh, also using up a lot of memory so this is extraordinarily useful uh, this tool and it's called the resource monitor it's built into Windows 7 and it's absolutely free I highly recommend that you check this out um, especially if your computer is slow this is something to take a look at now uh, we can go into event logs but it's going to take a long time basically what you want to do is type in event uh, and go to view event logs you can find it in control panel and when you go here you want to go to Windows logs and under security this is an area that's important and easy to explain if you have multiple people connecting to your computer under security I have so many events that I should clear out the security log but uh, it tells you exactly who logged in and when uh, and with what credentials uh, and from what domain and from where and this is extraordinarily useful now you can also go uh, to application and you would be surprised there's a lot of information here but occasionally you'll get an error and if you see a pattern of errors and you're having problems with your computer uh, this is where you want to get involved but for the most part you see yeah bonjour service is known to always crash it's an Apple software and it comes with iTunes and it's terrible uh, I usually uninstall that service but you'll see a lot of different things here and uh, it's not as uh, how do I say coordinated uh, as uh, the resource or the reliability monitor so you have to so you can use filtering and learn how to use uh, this uh, control uh, console here and you can find out a lot about your computer uh, and what is going wrong with your system uh, under system you'll see more kernel level or high level uh, information going on uh, as well as some networking information and and when the uh, core system files of Windows uh, ha experience errors you'll get that here and the filtering options for the this uh, tool is great um, but normally you would not go into the event log reading all of these all the time um, unless you had a lot of time to burn what you would want to do is if you're experiencing um, a reoccurring problem that prevents you from either doing your work or enjoying your computing experience you can go into the event viewer try to figure out what's wrong so in that sense I've given you a number of tools that I use um, to help myself uh, and others uh, to understand my computer better so there you go uh, thanks a lot for watching visit windows7forums.com for more information just like this